Hello my soccer universe. Well, isn't it great to have Serie A back and again. Serie A is not the defensive league it used to be anymore. There were a flurry of goals and I have to say that the restart of Serie A was probably the best of any of them. Yes, uh, I think it helped that the Coppa Italia was taken care of first. So some teams already get some uh, practice, but also the other teams got a lot of training in. It seemed a lot more fluid than, for instance, compared to Spain, where I actually find it uh, rather tedious to watch at times. Um, and Spain was already a league uh, ahead of the break that was not scoring that many, many goals. Uh, Serie A and thanks to Atalanta as we will see largely responsible for it. But it started off with Torino against Parma which uh, I saw a little bit. It was an in the end interesting game. Torino took the lead through Nkulu in the 15th minute. But Kutzka uh, equalized in the 31st and this was basically how, how, how the game was going. Always Torino first better than Parma better. Uh, Torino got um, early in the second half a penalty that Belotti uh, failed to convert and then it could have gone either way to be honest but it ends 1-1 uh, in the late, uh, late game this was Saturday and we uh, you saw we are doing already uh, we have the makeup games from Saturday Sunday and then I'm gonna do the whole round that was played now from Monday through Wednesday sorry I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself uh, with many things um, Verona Cagliari um, seemed to be a pretty clear game for most of the time because after 26 minutes uh, Di Carmine had already scored two for um, Verona but then uh, Simeone puts one into the net just before halftime um, after Borini got sent off with a red card and you really had the feeling, yeah, maybe this game could turn. It did not. Uh, Cagliari had some, missed some chances and um, once they got a yellow red in the 70th, I think the game was then safe for uh, Verona, who at that time then leapfrogged Milan um, to go ahead of them. The two big boys that still had to make games up was, were Atalanta and Inter. And at that point, Atalanta, everyone's wondering, will Atalanta um, get back to normal? Yes, they did. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, within 37 minutes of uh, four goals scored. One was disallowed uh, due to handball, but Jim City, Zapata and an on goal by Burabia made it quickly 3 0. Although Sassol actually had some chances early, early on. Sabata made, made it in 4-1 and then there was only uh, some cosmetics at the end where Burabia then pulls one back. But Atalanta looking strong and given that there was done the clash with Lazio coming up, come, come, that already was a little bit uh, mouth-watering that you could see. And then uh, everyone was looking at Inter, if Inter can make it a three-way race and Inter looked for the most of the time really good. I have to say, uh, Lukaku after Eriksen assist uh, makes it 1-0 and Martinez in the 33rd makes it 2-0 and there should have been many more goals coming. Eriksen in particular looked actually quite good. But right after the half, Thorsby pulls one back for Sampdoria and then it's for about half an hour. Um, Inter is suddenly a little bit uh, shaky, shaky. So from being really good it went not so good, but Inter can hang on uh, to the win. And after all that, we had the following table uh, that Juve was now one point ahead of Lazio, but Inter was now within six points of Juve, which, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Um, could get in there, but also Atalanta was also moving, uh, you know, getting staying clear of Roma. As I said, Hellas and Parma with uh, their um, pick their pick their points to go ahead of Milan, who's dropped to ninth, and Cagliari also, um, thanks to goal difference because Sassuolo got so many, moved ahead of Sassuolo, which was an interesting thing. And then we had the first full round played for, as I said, from Monday through Wednesday, round 27. And uh, I didn't see much of uh, Fiorentina Brescia, which ended uh, in, in a draw, but of course I watched Lecce Milan. And also Milan looked surprisingly good uh, and had many chances in, in, in the first 30 minutes. They really could have well uh, scored more than the one by Castillejo, where a really nice cross by Cialanoglu was put in by uh, Castillejo. But with this 1-0, kind of the game started to break and there was also uh, then an uh, injury to Kier, where Gabia had to come on. So a little bit unsettling there. 
A uh, goal for Lecce was disallowed, which I thought was rather lucky, but I guess, well, um, all right-ish, uh, if, if, if you look, but I felt it was a uh, little bit lucky for Milan. Wearing Milan, they didn't play plain in white, but I have to wear this wonderful jersey. But then in the second half, I thought, and towards the end of the first and the beginning of the second, I thought Lecce is really getting into the game, Milan is letting the back into the game. And then a penalty is given, which I was briefly hoping it's not, but it, it, it was clear that this uh, would be a penalty, although, yeah, I found it kind of soft. Uh, and Mancuso makes it 1-1, and I mean, now, is Milan going to throw us away? Fortunately enough, they respond immediately, and Bonaventura, just a minute later, makes it 1-0. And then after Ge um, Jalanoglu assists Rebic, uh, three minutes later, runs clear on goal and makes it 3-1, and... Okay, we're gonna see this through, and then Leao adds a fourth, and probably could, could have been more, but I think Milan looked overall quite good, and I was very happy with that. Of course, they have now a bear of a program ahead. I mean, there's Roma coming, they have to play Juve, they have to play Napoli, so I'm not... If they can keep this performance, I think I am looking more positive, but I am a little bit doubtful that it uh, will stay up like that. Another team that actually performed well uh, for once was Juve. I, it was not a dazzling performance, but at least there were dazzling goals. A uh, penalty by Ronaldo. He, uh, if that was a penalty. It, it, it was a weird situation because there was a free kick and at the edge of the box given for Bologna. And suddenly the referee looks at something. Uh, there was a, what was it, a handball or whatever? It was weird, and then, uh, yeah, Ronaldo, of course, converts it. However, the lead was deserved at that point. It's just that penalty, I think, was not. And then after a really uh, cheeky Bernadeschi Basque Dybala with a wonderful goal, 2-0. Now, I have a little bone to pick with the ref, because while Juve's performance was good and that is fully deserved to win, there should have been another penalty given for Bologna. Uh, that was clear, a much clearer penalty than the one that Juve got. And Danilo in the 82nd should have been sent off straight. He uh, managed to get himself sent off with a second yellow, but that should have been happening much, much sooner. But still, Juve looking good. Uh, Cagliari getting a last-minute win at Spal. Uh, was an up-and-down game. I think Petania had a really big miss. But in the end, Simeone gets the first win for Cagliari, I think, this year. Uh, they have not won for a long, long time. Hellas against Napoli uh, was kind of the second best match, of, at least from table, uh, of, the, of the round. Um, and Milik, with a nice shot, gave Napoli an early lead. Um, Napoli, but you know, more in the counter, they, they play a lot more pragmatic now. Um, and Verona was in the, in the game, had a goal disallowed for handball. Um, and it needed then at the very end that Lozano puts the game away. But um, I think Napoli was solid, was solid enough to deserve the win. But it was uh, quite some work to get there. Uh, not quite some work, I have to say, is what Geno and Parma did. Uh, it was the Cornelius uh, show who already scored a hat-trick in the first game uh, in Parma and now he scored a hat-trick again uh, in the 18th and the 33rd and the 53rd. However, the story is in the 29th, Crescito missed a penalty for Genoa, kind of allowing Parma, who was overall the better team, to, um, to really take an imposing lead. Falke, they get a second penalty, which is uh, fair enough uh, scored. Makes it 1-3 and then uh, at the very end Kulusevski makes it 4-1. So big win for Parma. Udine with uh, uh, loses to, to, uh, at Torino. Kind of a lay, labored win, but hey, finally Belotti scores. Could have maybe been more... Uh, from the highlights I saw, it was, uh, Torino was the better team. Let's put it that way. But all of that was just the prelude to what was happening yesterday in the evening. I mean, yesterday's two games were just... Uh, the Inter game and the Atalanta game were just outstanding. Uh, Inter not putting in a very good performance overall. Uh, being leaky at the back with Caputo uh, scoring already very early on. Uh, make it 1-0 for Sassolo. However, they get back. Kind of a softish penalty, but Lukaku converts it. Well, um, you know, when, when, when I say so, so, I don't, there was clear contact, so I don't want to discount that one. Uh, 
Biragi then with a really nice shot just before the half after Alexandris assist makes it 2-1. And that's how it ends in the half. And Lautaro Martinez is coming on in the 62nd and shortly thereafter uh, Gagliardini. I think it was a cross in from Martinez. Lukaku shoots, the keeper saves it and it rolls towards the line where Gagliardini, uh, no one else there. Three meters out, he yanks it, wants to yanks it in and hits the bar. And that was going to bite Inter. There should have been a penalty given uh, for handball. Um, I think already in the 75th for um, uh, Salazar Solo. Was not, but a little bit later, Ashley Young clearly fouls Berardi. Uh, fouls, uh, it was not Berardi, but Berardi converts the penalty in the 81st. And I think, yeah, mm -hmm, that's going to be interesting. But uh, Sassolo, a little bit like Art, Art Atalanta without the uh, big Elan going forwards. Um, and... They forget about defending uh, because after Cantareva a core um, no, it was a free kick. Uh, at the suddenly Borja Valero is totally free there and can net it from short distance in. It was short short enough to not miss it. But equally, uh, same thing goes for Inter, where Magnani suddenly is very clear uh, at the edge of the box after a cross comes in. I think uh, Martinez did not defend uh, very, very well there. And Magnani, uh, from a short distance, 89th, makes it 3-3. Absolute crazy game. I, I saw most of the second half and it was really the last uh, 15 minutes were just nuts. Uh, no... Uh, defending what whatsoever and then Skrinja uh, tripping gets himself uh, yellow red and is sent off. Roma um, yeah, made hard, harder work than needed uh, of Sampdoria because they actually had uh, good chances but, Gabi had, but then they kind of hand Gab Gab Gabbiadini the first goal in the 11th minute and they had a wonderful goal by Vere 2 disallowed because of handball, which is one of those, yes, it's, uh, I hate this rule, uh, honestly. It was a wonderful goal that should have stood. Uh, I, I, or, uh, let's put it, I would have loved to have it stand. However, in the second half, Roma gets it over with, and Jaco in the 64th makes a, also a really nice goal. And in 80, 85th, uh, after assist by Cristante, he gets the winner for Roma, so they're off to a good restart. And then Atalanta Lazio, everyone was saying, ah, we hope this will be a great game. And boy, did it live up to the billing. The two best offenses. This was a joy to watch. Absolutely joy to watch. It was going back and forth. Nah, maybe not. No, back and forth. It was kind of a copy of the first game where Atalanta had a 3 0 lead in, uh, at halftime and then it ended 3 3. This time also, the away team, Lazio with. Deadly counter strikes. Um, completely outplay Atalanta for about half an hour, I have to, I have to say. Um, the room scores an own goal after. Um, ah, who, who was it? Who, who gave the cross in? Lazari gives a, gives a really nice cross in. The, uh, that the room won, won it safe, but Paul puts in his own on it. One of those counter attacks. Then, after. Uh, they cleared another count, they, they cannot get the ball, ball away. Luis Alberto plays it to Milinkovic Savic, who makes a diagonal, wonderful shot uh, into the net. In the 11th minute, it's 2 0 Lazio. And to be honest, uh, as much as I enjoy Atalanta, I really want Lazio to win this one so that the title race stays a little bit uh, closer. Uh, Immobile misses two great chances, but then also on the other side, were quite some misses. And uh, when Gossens after a nice cross by Hattebur, makes it 1-2 in the 38th, I thought, yeah, this could be exciting, because if it would have been 2-0 at halftime, I probably would have turned, turned off and went to bed. No, this got exciting. And then in the second half, Lazio didn't have much to show anymore. And they already had a huge chance uh, right after the half, I think Papu Gomez, that was saved. Uh, but in the 66th, after uh, the rune assist, Malinowski with a laser. This was an even better goal, I thought, than the Milinkovic Savage. Milinkovic Savage was a finer goal, but that one was just a rocket into the uh, net from outside of the box in the 66. And the kind of the writing was on the wall. Lazio could not hold Atalanta at bay anymore. And then if um, the goalie Stratakosha forgets about how to handle a corner kick, 
Palomino can head, he headed in. Horrible defending there. There was a, a chance for Lazio to equalize, but I think there were equal chances for At Atalanta to add a fourth, if not a fifth. Wonderful game. Unfortunately, now if you look at the table, this means that Juventus is four points clear and has now a much higher chance of winning. It's not over yet because Juventus has to go through quite some tough games and there is still the head-to-head -head in Turin. So I wouldn't call, call it over, but at the moment it clearly looks all in Juve's favor. Inter, with that, I think that's just too much. Eight points. Uh, I actually think that Atalanta has a much better chance of... Uh, getting in there, but let's see about that. Uh, Roma, Napoli, look at, at the moment at the Europa League spots and since Napoli has won the Coppa Italia, uh, eighth place, I think, uh, seventh for sure. Seventh gets you in, I'm not sure about eighth. Might be that, uh, maybe not, now seventh will get you in. So thanks to the Coppa Italia, uh, which at the moment is Parma uh, due to goal difference. Although Milan did a little bit for goal difference, but this 05 against Atalanta is still hurt, hurting them. But they're level on points now. Uh, Hellas going back, but I think the race for this last Europa League spot could be an, uh, an intriguing one. Caleri finally gets also a little bit back into the game. And if we look towards the bottom of the, of the table, it seems Spal and Brescia are gone. And it's a four-way race, I would say. Udine, Sampdoria, Genoa and Lecce. And I am afraid that Lecce might bite the dust there. I think they are the ones that are the most shaky. Now, usually in my Serie A review, I don't talk about Austria. But since the German League was not playing, I think I will pack on Austria now. Uh, at least as long as they're playing a little bit with Italy, where we also had a crazy round. The relegation round again. We will see, uh, thanks to St. Bölten and uh, Tirol playing a draw and Admira losing to Austria. We will see that Admira is now in trouble. But I think the big talking point is the championship round where, first of all, I actually, yes, I didn't see last because I was visiting, uh, we, we were meeting with the colleagues. <laughs> having fun there uh, but I follow for the game and uh, it took a while until last got going in the first half it was not all that great but in the second half they so it was nil nil but then they turn turn it on they got a penalty that Frieza converted in the 53rd and from then all the flood gets open Ramftl deflected shot in the 61st uh, 2 nil uh, right in the 69th makes it 3 nil Michel one nice uh, goal 74th makes it 4 0. Uh, they put one back through Dosu, which at first uh, lo looks like he he just gets the ball on his face in the know, but he actually with a very nice touch makes this goal. But Ragus and makes it 5 1. Wolfsburg easy 2 0 win over Graz, and then the big one. Now that Lask got two points back, it was not a title decider yet. Uh, Salzburg needs to have one more point, which unfortunately they will not play hard back at home. They probably will get that point uh, sooner, rather sooner than later, and with a superior goal difference. But Rapid had the big hopes to make it a race, and they even get through Kara, <laughs> under 18 player, I think, uh, 19, 18 years, I think. He makes it 1 0, but right uh, two, two minutes later, Oka for equalizes, although it has to be said that it was offside. Um, there was an offside that should have been taken away. The linesman didn't see it and we don't have yet the uh, VAR, which is crazy. Similarly, Mwepo makes it then 2-1 in the 30th. Uh, uh, Rapid claimed the foul, but I think that one was kind, 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 kind of right. And then the flood gets open. Shoboslai, 39th, Valci in the 44th, uh, then Ramalio in the 60th uh, with what looked like a direct corner, but he just touched it at the pick of the bunch, a wonderful Yunusovic goal after corner corner again, 6-1. Huang Hichan with a penalty in the 79th and Fontas can pull only one back. Uh, total down domination, Rapid destroyed and I actually, for once, I like it. I do not like these two two teams, but the way Rapid has been behaving, especially towards uh, Lask and now with their own fans, they really deserved a uh, severe beating. So they got that one. If we look here now at the table, um, the good news is, for me, Lask is now moving in second place. Although second place doesn't guarantee a European group phase, which third place does. This is the one thing that bugs me a little bit about the whole thing. But, you know, second place, I think this is where Lask should be. It should be not even that tight. We should actually be only four points behind Salzburg. That's my personal opinion. 
uh, but we talked about that. And if you look at the relegation, Tirol is now a point ahead of uh, Admira. Um, yeah, it doesn't look good for them. Uh, it's still very, very, very tight on the bottom. So, let me know what you thought about all these games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed uh, this video. I am so happy Serie A is back. It's just wonderful to watch your favorite league again. And yeah, I will talk to you soon about more Serie A. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.